Hello again, it's Triad Amity, and I'm back at you with some more Diablo 3 Reaper of Souls content. In today's guide, we'll be going over Shenlong's spirits, the new monk sets, and the new spirit generator build that goes with it. We'll be covering gearing, talents, pretty much everything you need to know to play the build efficiently. This build is absolutely amazing. I'm having a really good time with it. Um, it's easily capable of greater F60 plus solo. Um, and there's people on the leaderboards as high as 72 solo. So at the moment, very, very strong. Um, but yeah, guys, let's get started. Um, if you have a look along the bottom of the screen, there is an interactive menu. If you get bored of a section in the guide or you know about it, just click on that and it'll bring you to the next part. Um, so yeah, guys, let's get in there. Okay, so moving on to the build itself. Um, one thing to note is this is a new set, Shenlong Trillant Assault and Shenlong's Fist of Legend. Um, they increase your damage by 1% per uh, point of spirit you have. Um, so, you know, I have 300 spirits, that's 300% plus... When you reach maximum spirit, you gain an additional 300%, um, and that lasts until you run out of spirit. You no longer gain it passively. You can gain it through on-hit effects, and you lose 65 a second. So, overall, your damage is just freaking just ridiculous with this. So, yeah, guys, let's get started with the build itself. So, moving on to the build itself, um, I will show you different variations of, you know, which skills you can swap in and out. Um, but there are a few, quite a few skills which are kind of set in stone. Um, which are like required for the build to be as good as it is. Um, so let's get started with the primary. This is adjustable, but I'm using uh, Crippling Wave with Mangle. So pretty much Crippling Wave reduces their attack speed by 20%, which is amazing for survivability. Reduces their slow speed or movement speed, which is nice for like enemies who try to get away and things like that. Even though Cyclone Strike kind of keeps that under wraps. Um, but we're mainly using this for the raw damage uh, and the AoE sweep that it does. It has a nice cone of damage, which is everything around you. So when you're Cyclone striking everything into you, um, your AoE damage is, like, insane. Like, it's just completely just dominating everything in, like, a 360-degree circle around you, essentially. Um, but anyways, uh, Crippling Wave's the way I went um, once I was fully geared. Uh, to begin with, I started with Fist of Thunder with... Uh, bit thunderclap or uh, static charge but i'll go into that when i go over gearing um which when you should use each skill kind of um, but yeah crippling wave is the way to go uh really really high damage and nice variability uh cyclone strike i find this is a must for the build because gathering things together is absolutely crucial uh crippling wave doesn't naturally teleport you to your target so keeping things pulled towards you is extremely important to maximize damage um so the rune i'm using for that is implosion um, making the radius much further than, than I think it's, it starts on 16 yards and it goes up to uh, 24 yards, it goes up by 10 yards, which is big, yeah. Um, so that's absolutely crucial for like keeping things on top of you and maximizing damage. Um, and then Epiphany, Epiphany um, this is a really, really, really good skill um, to the point where it's like completely necessary, I'd find. So the build revolves around you hitting 100% resource. As you can see, it's going down now. Um, but you hit 100% spirit, um, and then, then you're, that's when your damage really starts. So getting up to 100% spirit and maintaining it is crucial. Um, this skill makes it so you get there quickly. I mean, you gain 20 per second, um, and then you dash to your target as well on top of that on a very short cooldown. So pretty much you get to your, you know, you, you get immediately to max spirit right away. Um, and then we'll maintain that with another skill, um, and then you teleport to everything. So, you know, really, really good. Rune-wise, I think Desert Trout's probably the way to go. Uh, reduces all damage by 50%. I mean, this skill probably has like a 75% uptime with my cooldown reduction. Maybe a bit more. And uh, so it's 50% reduced damage the majority of the time. Uh, the other runes, I just don't find very good um, at all. So I'd probably go with Desert Trout. Now, Dashing Strike, this can be swapped around. <clears throat> Um, sorry, excuse me. The movement you get from this, like the mobility, is like if invaluable, I find. I find it's hard to replace this as a skill because getting around is just absolutely crucial for greater rift progression and just farming in general. I mean, you farm really, really fast with it. Cooldown reduction, again, we're building that. It just helps so much with this. Uh, it's up every couple of seconds. And yeah. Um, re I'm using Radiance increases your attack speed by 15% after you charge, which is really, really amazing. Uh, it keeps your damage quite high, um, and overall just really, really good. Um, the other rune, which I would say is probably just as good, if not better, 
is Blinding Speed. Gives you 40% dodge chance for 4 seconds after using Dashing Strike. Um, once you get into the higher grade of rifts, like 65-ish, 60, maybe even 60 plus, um, this is really, really good because it's up most of the time. Um, so you pretty much gain 40% dodge chance like 90% of the time because the cooldown it almost hits 4 seconds anyways. So yeah, I mean 40% dodge chance is just really, really, really good. So for farming, I'd probably go Radiance. And once you start getting those higher grade of rifts, I'd go Blinding Speed. And then Breath of Heaven, I find this is the absolute bread and butter of the build. Um, the heal is absolutely useless as we heal so much anyways. That's not where we, why we're using it. We're using it for the rune, which is infused with light. Gain an additional 14 spirit for spirit generating attacks uh, for 5 seconds. So again, this ability is up like most of the time because our cooldown reduction is so high. I think if we get it down to like 7 seconds, so it's up like 80-90% of the time. Um, but pretty much your on-hit effects with Shenlong still work. Um, your passive regeneration does not, but your on-hit does. So when you're gaining, what, what is it, 12, so yeah, 26 per hit, and you're hitting that many times in a row, I mean, like, our, our attack speed is extremely high. Um, so you literally maintain your spirit, uh, you know, maximum for so long with that up um, that you just maximize your DPS overall. So I'd say this is absolutely crucial for the build in terms of keeping up your Shenlong's buff. And on to Mantras. Mantras, uh, okay, so for farming, I use Conviction with Overawe or um, Dishearten. Sorry, not Dishearten. Annihilation for the movement speed. But for higher grade of rifts, I've been using Mantra, Mantra of Salvation with um, uh, Dodge Chance. So Agility um, increases Dodge Chance to 35%. Uh, absolutely crucial for survivability. You get 20% resistance on active, um, which is kind of usable. I mean, you don't find yourself spamming it that much. But yeah, it's nice. Um, and then, yeah, it's just for survivability, it's absolutely amazing. Um, and in this build, I'm using the Inner Set as well. So it's doubling the passive effect and the base effect from the Mantra. Um, so yeah, it's our survivability just goes up a ridiculous, ridiculous amount with that. So that's pretty much the core build. Um, not a huge amount to adjust, but you know, with Dashing Strike, you can swap between uh, like farm mode and survival mode uh, along with your Mantra. Um, Eh, nah, I wouldn't change that too much. I mean, maybe if you're farming, you can swap in, like, Inner Fire or something, but yeah. But that's the core build. Uh, passives are pretty straightforward as well. So the passives are moderately adjustable, depending on, like, your gear that you found, or just general play style, but these are the ones I'm using. Um, Harmony, it gives you 40% of your single element's resistances towards all resist. So, like, your poison resist and things like that um, multiply quite a bit. Um, I'm actually been using Guardian's Path today for the majority of a day, and that increased my survivability by, like, a lot more, I found, um, but maybe my uh, resistances aren't high enough to make Harmony effective. But those two are definitely really good. I mean, Guardian's Path being 15% dodge chance, uh, yeah, I mean, sorry, 35% dodge chance, um, yeah, it's really, really, really nice. Um, Exalted Soul is one I find that's kind of irreplaceable. It increases your maximum spirit by 50. So that completely works hand-in-hand -hand with Shenlong's um, first set effect, which is Spirit Generators is increased by 1% for each point of spirit you have. Because when you're capping on your spirit, uh, that's an extra 50%, which is really, really good. And on top of that, it gives you 4 spirit regen per second. So when you do run out of spirit, you can get back to your cap really, really quickly with that. Uh, Beacon of Yatar, very simple, reduces all cooldowns by 20%, um, goes really, really well with Breath of Heaven and Epiphany, uh, uh, so you can't really say no to that, and Dashing Strike, of course. Um, and then CZ Initiative, dealing damage to enemies above 75%, increases your attack speed by 30%, uh, really, really good DPS cooldown, uh, not cooldown, just passive in general. Um, I, I find it irreplaceable, I just love the, the base attack speed it gives you. I mean, you could say uh, Altricity is, like, almost as good, but I find mobs die quick enough to make the 30% more worthwhile than the, the overall 15%. But I haven't fully tested it, to be honest with you. I think I think they're probably close to on par, but I just like CZ Initiative anyways. I just like the fast attack speed, doubling it up to 60% with Flying Dragon. Yeah, it, it's pretty damn good. Um, but yeah, there's some things you can you can modify and adjust depending on like if you're playing with groups. I mean, like Unity is always good with playing with a group. You could swap out 
like Seize the Initiative or maybe Guardian's Path if your spy abilities up enough. Um, but generally, just kind of play around with those and see what you like. But I find these four at the moment are probably the best for the build. All right, guys. So moving on to the gearing. Um, this is where things get a bit um, strange in terms of like, there's a lot of variation with the build, a lot of ways you can play it, but this is the way I, I've chosen to, because um, there are a lot of flavor items you can pick and uh, even different sets you can mix in. Um, so yeah, let's get started. Absolutely crucial, Shenlong's um, spirit. Um, yeah, bread and butter of the build. Brings up your spirit generators to uh, like a ridiculously high plateau of damage. Um, you can't really say no to it. Set-wise, I'm using my two sets uh, for Raiments of Thousand Storms along with my two sets of Innas. Um, so Raiment of Thousand Storms gives you 25% attack speed of spirit generators along with 300% increased damage on them. Uh, absolutely crucial. You know, 300% damage is nothing to, <laughs> to mess around with along with 25% damage um, being friggin' ridiculous. Uh, and then again, Innas Mantra... I'm using the two set. It gives your passive effects 100% baseline. So it doubles your, your sorry, well, not your passive effects, your passive effect off your mantra. So for survivability, um, oh man, this makes a huge difference. Just, I mean, let's have a look. So one item, granted I lose like, you know, a lot of toughness anyways from the item, uh, like 19 million toughness difference. So without, you know, that, uh, I'm probably getting like 15 million toughness just from that alone. So, yeah. Um, we're basing around cooldown reduction. So, Leork's Crown is very, very crucial. Um, increases your gem. Mine's pretty bad, but up to 100% the effect on your gem. So, you know, 12% with 100% goes up to 24. Um, yeah, really, really good. Cooldown reduction high is a good thing to have. I'd say anywhere around like 40% plus uh, you're in a pretty sweet spot. Um... Belt-wise, I'm using String of Ears. Uh, there's a few variations you can use, but honestly, I think, like, you could use, like, Witching Hour if you don't think survivability is an issue, but I find um, String of Ears to be absolutely amazing. I mean, the damage reduction from melee attacks, considering, like, everything's always surrounding you, um, it's pretty ridiculous. Um, Ring-wise, I'm using Bastions of Will, which is Focus and Restraint. Uh, I mean, when you hit with a Resource Generator or Primary Skill... You do 50% increased damage, and then when you hit with the resource uh, spending attack, you deal 50% increased damage. Um, so weaving in your Cyclone Strike every... You probably will use it more than 5 seconds anyways, but weaving it in, keeping your 100% damage up. Uh, yeah, I mean, it doesn't get much better than that. I think it's probably the best ring combo. Um, I think it, it's miles better than um, uh, Ring of Convention or Convention of Elements, or whatever it's called. But yeah, I mean, it's up to you guys, but I think this is probably the must-have. Um, Amulet-wise, you can get whatever has the good stats on it. I mean, mine, uh, it'll. I don't have my three gems yet on PTR, but when I do, I'll swap out the fire damage for a socket and then put in, uh, you know, Bane of the Trapped or Bane of Swiftness. Uh, Bracers, Spirit Guards, um, these are really, really ridiculous. Uh, so pretty much your Spirit Generators reduce your damage taken by 37% for three seconds. Uh, so yeah, I mean, like, Look at that. So we go from 55 to 87 million toughness just with the click of a button. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty ridiculous. I mean, you definitely want to go for those. I think it's absolutely crucial for the build. Um, other than that, that's about it. I mean, you can... Oh, yeah, and then Mage Fist. Um, it kind of speaks for itself with fire damage. It gives you raw fire damage. Um, you can get five stats on there, four stats on there as well. So you can go for the trifecta. Attack speed's always on there, so attack speed, crit damage, and crit chance are probably the way to go. Um, yeah, it's pretty self-explanatory. It just goes hand-in-hand -hand with fire damage. There are different ways you can play it. I've seen people playing with um, uh, whatever it's called, Cinder Coat, uh, but I just don't think the resource cost reduction on fire is very useful. Um, and then you can swap out whatever set pieces you want as well. So, like, if you want to use, like, you know, chest, in his chest and in his shoulders, there's no... There's nothing stopping you um, from doing that. I know there's no inner shoulders, but, you know, just an example. Um, the other way of playing the build, guys, is you can swap out some Ulianas. Um, so if you don't want Innas, if you feel like survivability is high enough, so you don't need the Mantras, um, putting in Ulianas uh, two set is really, really good. Every third attack um, makes it so your Spirit Generator applies Exploding Palm. And then if you mix that in with the uh, Gungo gear... 
um, gung gung doho gear um, for the on it, yeah every every time exploding bomb kills something it applies exploding bomb and everything else. Your AOE damage goes up quite a bit, um, but once I swapped into Inna's, I didn't go back. Uh, I thought it was absolutely crucial um, for the survivability aspect of it. But that is another way to play the build as well. Um, and it is very effective. I mean, you can farm Torment 10, no problem. I was doing like Greater Rift like 54 with it or something. So there's no quarrel with, with putting in Uliana's at all. Um, let's have a look at the stats, though, and what we should be aiming for specifically. So stat-wise, um, very, very simple. We're aiming for cooldown reduction um, and pretty much... Max survivability. Um, survivability is very crucial in the higher greater rifts. Um, you're constantly surrounding, ev like surrounded by everything, and you're constantly tanking relentlessly. Um, so cooldown reduction items you can get it on. Uh, shoulders being the main one. The orc's crown being the other item, increasing cooldown reduction by a ridiculous amount. Um, those are the two real items you'll get your cooldown reduction off of. Um, so eight percent off that, and you get as high as like twenty. 5% or whatever off of that. Um, so it's definitely the way to go. Um, off all of your other gear, I mean, critical hit damage is very, very nice. Um, as crit Yeah, that's critical hit chance, critical hit damage. Make your damage go insane. Um, attack speed on certain items like rings and things isn't necessarily the worst either. I mean, attack speed, you know, we're attacking relentlessly nonstop. So yeah, good way to go as well. Um, and then fire damage on slots like... Uh, Bracers, you can go for there. You're going to have it on your gloves. Uh, on your neck is overkill. You don't actually need that much. You should go for a socket instead, but I haven't actually got the gem to use properly, so not overly worth it. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much what you want to go for. Crit chance, crit damage, uh, cooldown reduction. Um, we'll go over Paragon points now as well, guys. Uh, so Paragon, I'm putting everything into decks, 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 damage, damage, damage. Uh, cap your movement speed at 25%. Um, cooldown reduction, and then attack speed are really nice. Critical hit damage, uh, you should have your crit chance and crit damage at a 10 to 1 ratio. Um, so what that means is for every, you know, uh, so if you had 4, 46%, I'd have 460% crit damage. That's the best way to cap that. Um, but I've gone for attack speed over crit chance because it overall increased my damage a bit more. And along with crit damage, uh, I went attack speed over it because right now my damage goes a lot higher with that. Uh, cooldown reduction being the main stat you want to go for, though, um, as your main abilities and keeping up your spirit relies on cooldown reduction. Um, Defensive-wise, I want resist all, armor, finally life. Um, yeah, I mean, resist all's self-explanatory, gets increased as well by your salvation. Uh, armor's always key, and then life is, it's good, but, you know, you, you, unmitigated, your life means nothing pretty much. Uh, life regen being last as we regen a lot with the build anyways. Um, and then utility, uh, I've gone area damage followed by life on hits. Uh, resource cost reduction is actually fairly useless considering the only thing that we use to use to, to actually like reduce the cost of is cyclone strike. Uh, which yeah, I mean, okay. It's not, it's not the best. It doesn't really matter. Go for that last, you know, obviously over gold find. <laughs> Uh, that's it for Paragon Points. They're fairly straightforward. Um, let's move on to the gems and have a look at the uh, legendary gems I'm using. So the legendary gems are fairly straightforward. Um, there's not many options to pick between. There's a main a core four, I'd say, which are absolutely crucial. Um, so you can swap in the one depending on how you want to play. But anyway, Simplicity Strength uh, increases the damage of your primary skills by 0.5% per level. Uh, and then the level 25 effect, primary skills heal you, heal you for 2% of your maximum life on hit. Oh man, this is ridiculous. Like your your recovery just goes like insane with this. Like four million seven like what? Do you know what I mean? Like that it's so high with that up. Um you can't really say no. And on top of that, the damage in your primary skills is crucial as well. Bane of a stricken. I haven't even got mine to level twenty five yet, and it's just insane. Like Jesus Christ. Uh each each attack you make against the enemy increases the damage it takes from your attacks by one point six percent. Um, yeah, when you're attacking something, you just see your damage getting higher and higher as it goes. Um, I think it's just hard to say no to this gem, to be honest with you. And then the level 25 rank increases damage by 25% chance against Rift Guardians. Uh, Rift Guardians are pretty strong. This build takes them down really, really well. Uh, but that 25% damage increase will be absolutely amazing as well. And then the third gem, um, 
Okay, so I'm, I'm gearing towards Bane of the Trapped. I think this is probably going to be the better choice. Uh, increases your damage by uh, just a raw amount, and that's up 100% of the time to everything around you. Because you're slowing stuff with your Crippling Wave plus the 25 effect, which is the aura. Um, yeah, raw damage, you know. Actually saying that, it's probably better than my fire damage. I could swap that out right now once it's leveled up. that will do more from 15% fire damage anyways. And it'll be on all of my damage as well. So yeah, um, pretty hard to say no to. And then uh, Gogok of Swiftness, or Gogok of Swiftness, I don't know. Um, pretty much 15% attack speed and 15% cooldown reduction. Very, very good as well, but I have a feeling Bane of a Trapped is probably going to take the cake on this one um, and be the better gem. Um, if you guys have any other suggestions, uh, let me know in the comment section below, but I feel like these four are probably the, the ones we want to go for at the moment. And finally, moving on to the Can Ice Cube passives. Um, these are set in stone, in my opinion, um, and I'll tell you why. Uh, Flying Dragon... Chance to double your attack speed when attacking. Not only does this double your effective damage, your DPS, um, it, it brings up your spirit generation by double. Um, it brings up your survivability by uh, essentially double your, your recovery. Um, and, yeah, it's it's just the best, I'd say. Um, I tested out Furnace for a while. Um, no. I mean, it, just Flying Dragon takes the cake here. Um, depth Diggers, uh, crucial. I mean, unless you're equipping them and you don't have your set bonuses... 100% damage on your primary skill. Uh, yeah, it's a no-brainer. Nothing really comes close to it. Um, for a while, I when I was using the generator builds um, that was applying the on-hit effect with the new set, I had Gungo gear um, along with my spirit guards. Um, reason being is because I had the depth diggers equipped. I had my two set, my two set for the uh, new set. So, yeah, Gungo gear was. Just making everything explode, which is really good. But yeah, if you if you don't have Depth Diggers equipped, you need to have that passive. Absolutely crucial. Um, and then this is just dependent on what I'm doing. If I'm doing Greater Rifts, I have Unity. Um, if I'm doing T10, I just swap out Convention of Elements um, for the raw damage. I mean, 200% on your fire damage is just ridiculous. Um, I've seen some people using Obsidian Ring of Zodiac, but I, I don't find like these cooldowns are... Um, they're up pretty much all the time with cooldown reduction anyways. I don't feel like this is the right build to use Obsidian Ring with Zodiac with. Um, I just don't feel like it's very, very good. Um, everything else just, uh, yeah, no. Uh, convention elements or unity, depending on what you're doing. Um, absolutely crucial. If you guys have any cool builds you use with your passives, let me know. But uh, yeah, I feel like these are just the way to go.
Radio. So that covers it for today's guide. Um, thank you for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Hopefully it was helpful towards you and you're going to walk away with something you didn't know or just a better insight on how the set works. And yeah, hopefully something fun comes out of it. Um, if you guys did like it, don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, also, don't forget to check out my Twitch channel, which is very active at the moment. I'm um, on pretty much every weeknight and uh, I'm going to start weekend soon as well. Um, so I'd like to see you there. I'm just, I just mainly mess around, you know, play different sets. I like to test out different, um, classes and things like that. I don't generally stick to one class for more than like a month at a time before I get bored and try something else. So it, it always changes and it's definitely always interesting, I hope. Um, but yeah, guys, if you liked the video, let me know in the comment section below, um, how it went. You know, if, if you have any different variations of the build or just different play styles, if you think I was wrong about something, call me out on it. You know, I'd like to hear your, your feedback. That's for sure. But yeah, guys, thanks a lot. Um, we'll see you all later with another video. Bye-bye.